Welcome to part two of the C-137 boat tour. Now, in part one, we showed you up here, the cockpit, the saloon, and all that good stuff. Part two is down below, all the cabins, what we have down there, as well as plant machinery. So, without further ado, follow me down these beautiful steps with leather covered handrails, and I will show you what the cabins and our workshop are first. So this is a starboard hull, follow me. So a couple of points. I know this is a, is a, is a companion when you're like, why are you show me a companion? There's a couple of points I want to show you. Firstly, these grab rails. We did a lot of work with Seawind and we kind of really wanted some nice leather there. So we've got this beautiful leather covered handrail and then going aft. Now, what we have here, this has all been modified. We have this cupboard here. This is for custom crockery. More cabinetry here. And again, if you remember the work that we did before, with this whole unit that used to extend there, by boxing this out, it gives us a full galley cupboard, which wasn't there before. So this is our little aft cabin. Now there is a lot going on in here. There is a full size double bed. It's not access on both sides, but we've got lights there, fans, opening hatch in the aft. There is another opening hatch there. Now, there's some clever things and modifications that you need to know about this cabin. Firstly, these drawers are quite shallow but what that essentially means is that everything past here is stowage so this all lifts up we have stowage in here and then this that goes back about five foot and these are just we have a lot of these random life rafts and uh, life jackets in there that we had to have to get the boat out of vietnam so again this for suitcases and it goes all the way back really are they, are they our life vests yeah they are there was yes. a random law or random rule that if you wanted to sail a boat out of vietnamese waters you have to have like a billion life vests. a billion life vests. if you lift the whole back of that up you can get engine access as well so there's engine access there if you take the headboard off if by any chance you need to get to the trans the reverse mounted engine that way but Teresa, if you step inside i'm going to show you some salient features of this lovely little cabin this door was an absolute pain in the backside for sea wind because what you have here is the deck mold and this is an integral part of the deck which essentially means that with the door out here, it was continually banging and knocking and you could not get full access. So James or Kevin, one of the genii at Seawind said, why don't we just put a bifold door? So now we have this really clever little door, it closes. Now, what else do we have? Locker space. There's a hanging locker in here. Very nice. <laughs> Mini locker in there. And then behind, three little shelves with fiddles. There's a little bench seat down here and a tiny little mini shelf there. <laughs> there's also at the back, there are the snake lights for reading. There's a fan, there's ventilation and the USB charging point for USB-C and USB-2. So essentially for a little cabin, there's a lot of ventilation here. It's probably the, you know, it's a nice little guest cabin. It's where, where Lucas and I used to sleep. How romantic. <laughs> actually quite nice. This is the first time I've actually spent know, any time in this cabin. I because I made the bloody bed. Oh yeah, exactly. And we've got like a little, was this always here? This like headrest? Yeah. We've just, we've just always been so, it's nice. It's it? actually so nice. Well, I don't, I suppose we've got our own room, but this is so lovely. I know. It's quite, it's quiet. It's so, There's so noise. like cozy. I know. And we've got like a nice little shelf here. I know. Where are the USB points? Right there. Oh, and a shelf back here yeah, as well. Yeah, your Kindle. My Kindle. I like it in here. Yeah. But maybe now I know where to go when you're annoying me. <laughs> okay, let's uh, now go forward and check out the four cabin Nick's workshop and we'll have a quick peek into the heads as well. Yep. Okay, now follow me forward. We're gonna, we have the heads here. I will come back to that because that takes a little bit of uh, doing on its own. Walking forward into our guest cabin, our major guest cabin. This is the massive, massive guest cabin. Now, we have a hatch in the ceiling, hatch there, so we've got two opening hatches, air conditioning vent, fan, USB ports, and then all the lights. Oh, I've got those lights back on, that's nice. They're nice, aren't they? The yeah. lights are really pleasant, isn't it? So we've got these really nice mood lights here. Well done, James stowage in here we have these funky little bins these kind of bins that articulate out for putting clothes in we also have 
uh, a big, there's a hanging wardrobe here, fiddled shelves in there. This is actually quite a big cupboard. And then we've got these two. <laughs> and what, what's in there at the moment? Wine. <laughs> Wine and water filters. And then we've got these areas here. We've got this lovely little fiddled area here, fiddled area here, and then a full length mirror behind the door. Can we just give a quick shout out to the Turkish factory for these amazing... Yes, yes. So basically the, the Turkish factory made us... They, we didn't ask for this at all. When the Turkish Seawind factory came to us and said, we've made you a load of custom bedding, we're like, thanks very much. <laughs> and it's beautiful. So thank you, Savage. That's really, really nice of you. This is berth seven. So it's a full length berth. It is probably at this end, about the size of a normal single. At the other end, say about 20 inches. But, you know, you can get a... It's a pretty useful for either a child's bed or well, it's a single bed. At the end, we've got a very, very large storage locker, and that goes right into the four peak. So whereas we have a sail locker in that side, at the on the port side, this side we've got a very large storage locker. There's also some little fiddled shelves here. This is not simply my seventh berth, it is also my workshop, and I'm gonna show you how that works. Let us just start with these cushions. Now these are split cushions. You can either take the cushion off, and I will do for ex example, because it's easier to show you, or you can just push it all the way back. Now. Worktop, this all opens up like here. So that spins back like that. These doors open like here, and inside here we have a little articulated a nice little door. Stool. It is a nice little stool. A couple of things that we specified when we had this workshop designed. Firstly, a vice has to fit here. So this area I can clamp a vice to. So if I want to do fine motor skill work, you have to be able to do fine motor skill work and that involves having your elbows down, not stood up. So we had to have something where I could sit because after all these years, most of the time you're doing fine motor skill work. What else do we have? Twin lights. These articulating lights basically mean that I can cast light anywhere and I don't have shadows. And that is super, super important if you're doing finickety work. So you actually do sit like that? Yeah. Right. General purpose outlets with USBs. So if I need to plug in a power tool or anything else, that is all there. In here, I have tool storage shelves so I can put all my tools. And then, importantly, under there, we have three shelves that are fiddled. These shelves have these boxes because I can tell you this much, you will get shit, rust, oil in those boxes and they need to either be hosed out or thrown away. So I wanted almost those boxes to be sacrificial. So they will sit in there full of tools, full of spares, full of bosun spares. And then it means that should I puncture an oil can or get a leak or something, that mean, that they can then be cleaned out. So this is my little workshop. And another point, there's a little bar down there which will contain any spillages. So if I do, so there's fluid there. And again, something that you do need to appreciate, should you be like, you know what, I'm tired. I haven't managed to fix that water pump. It is still, I'll get back to it tomorrow. It is time to go to the pub. All that means is I can just close all this down. Come back to it tomorrow. Okay, back in the hallway. We have another thing, another little Easter egg that James put for us. A slide out pantry. So in here we've got three shelves, all fiddled, just for keeping pantry items. Very, very good use of dead space. See that the design's been changed with the future There's holes. now three, three, three separate drawers that pull yeah. out. Probably better, but that's fine. And the aft heads. In here we have four length shower cubicle, shower, 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 drain plug. Nice window there, there are blinds still to come for those. Uh, an opening hatch, a saltwater flush toilet, that was our specification, and then washing machine. Washer dryer, actually. Lovely little thing. It's functional. Shelves down there, all nice. Little medicine cabinet. As I said, we've just got this boat, so there's like all these, all these cupboards are empty. <laughs> and so let us take a look at the master hull, the master hull, the port hull, all down there. This is just where the two of us live. So our guests will live on starboard, we will live on port. So follow me down these beautiful stairs and I will show you exactly what we have. We've got this really nice leather clad uh, handrail. And then we've got some nice deep bookshelves there. So something to observe. We have these lovely little lights that kind of like illuminate everything and they can be in white or in red. Let us go aft first and look at the heads. So this is our heads. We have a four height, four height, 
full head height. Let me six foot three shower cubicle, glass screen, grab rails in there. We have a hatch there and an opening hatch there. A bench seat in case you need to shower underway. And here we have a nice little shelf. And there's actually some lights down here as well. So we've got lights. It's a really nice little area. Fresh water flush toilet. And then we have shelving in the corner. We have a nice cabinet in the corner. We have three shelves, three cupboards under here for storage. And then a storage cupboard there for which we're keeping our towels in. Also to note, we have the filtration system for the water maker in here. So again, when we want to look at the water maker, if we want to see what's going on there, it's actually far easier to access through here. So this is some of our plant machinery and I will show you all that in a minute. Moving forward, let's just start with the door. Obviously this is completely compartmentalized so we can close this off and lock it. And then we've got cupboards here. Now the C1970 has two options. Option one is for storage, storage, and then a workstation. In here we have half height hanging locker. So we use this for our wet weather gear. We're probably never gonna need it because we have a fully enclosed cockpit. And then we've got two sets of drawers underneath. A couple of things to note, we've got these beautiful blinds here that are all kind of kept behind these panels. So everything is kind of, you don't see the lines. And behind here, we have an opening hatch. Um, something that was added after the test sale of hole one, full length hand grips. So that's something really, really good for us to kind of move ourselves around if the weather is inclement. Down here we have a little bench seat which actually has stowage underneath it and all the seats do have stowage underneath. So this is where we keep our dry bags. Moving forward, workstation, we have a vanity mirror here again which is all switchable, GPOs, USBs, USB-Cs, a little fiddle here that again saying we really did want to put on a little desk drawer here which has my copy of practical boat owner what year is that it's actually it's a recent one i bought oh, it right. a month ago great and a little laptop drawer and then underneath here we have an, an other ottoman another ottoman we have an ottoman there which is the same it matches the one upstairs so if we have a dinner party we can take that up but again a little ottoman there that all tucks away so that is our workstation let us just move forward into the cabin so i think they change between hull one and hull two this surround now has this beautiful fabric insert so a very nice feature and then moving forward yet again brings us into the master cabin. Now, what do we have? Opening hatch here, opening hatch here. So two large opening hatches. When you are laying in bed, you have these panoramic windows. You have about five foot of vision here. So you can lay in bed, having your morning coffee, looking out at your anchorage. So if you have the vanity unit, the workstation and not the wardrobe that comes out to here, you actually get vision through this window as well. So from laying in bed, you actually have a whole probably about 150 degrees of vision. It is a pretty beautiful place to be. Just explain what the option is here. So the, yeah. so the other option is there's two cupboards here. There's a wardrobe here, wardrobe here, and a third wardrobe here for added storage space. We just don't need it. Yeah. There is so much space on this boat. Then we've got these lovely curved ash panels and underneath those panels, we have USB ports and that's for Teresa's Kindle, for charging phones. Super, super important if you're on a boat to have a phone charger next to the bed so that you can keep your anchor alarm on because anchor alarms with GPS absolutely drain your phone battery. So that's really important. Two fans, two little snake lights and an air conditioning outlet duct. So again, really comfortable bed. For those of you asking about the mattress, they are about 10 centimeters with five centimeters of memory foam. So about 15 centimeters, that's about six inches. And again, a memory foam, they were already naturally memory foam topped they're fairly comfortable, they're firm, but pretty comfy. Bill like me. <laughs> Underneath the bed, we have two very deep cupboards. Underneath those cupboards, two, two drawers. And then moving forward, we have the walk-in wardrobe. <laughs> of course we do. So again, uh, there's no access through there, but we do have a mirror. But what we do have here, a hanging locker, another locker here, which is just for clothes and then this bin which actually we're starting to use the laundry basket thank you randy that was randy's suggestion so we use that as a laundry basket separate light in there to be and then we can close all this off and that's our bedroom cabin bedroom cabin <laughs> bedroom cabin 
Okay, and now finally we're gonna move on to plant machinery. Now, most of the plant machinery is actually kept underneath the sofas, behind the sofas, but I'm gonna just run through some of the salient points. Firstly, 24 volt system. So everything is run on 24 volts. There is a step down transformer, obviously for the 12 volt bits that we need, such as, for instance, the, the USB ports. So in there, we have a series of isolation boxes. So everything isolated, but these uh, are also the fuses and the fuses obviously can be monitored from there. But again, we've got these isolators and these are motorized isolators so we can turn everything off using the C-Zone. Now the guts of our entire system here is this big master volt battery system. Now we opted for the three master volt battery package because essentially three master volt batteries gives us enough power to run the air conditioning at night if we have 100% battery power. As we have said in previous videos, it's got to the point now where we don't actually ever check the battery monitor. It's just, it's just a, it's a not, we don't need to. We always, always have enough power. Behind here, this is one of the air conditioning units. Now it is important to note here that they have made custom ducting for this. These aren't the kind of big snake tubes that are, these are actually custom fiberglass uh, ducts, which actually gives us far better ventilation and saves on wastage. Other things to note here, we have these big solar panel uh, controllers. So the charge masters are there. We've got one for the aft, one for the fore, and that regulates that. There are two MPPT controllers that regulate everything. A series of circuit breakers there. And then finally, everything runs through this mass combi unit. And the master volt mass combi unit allows us, I think it's a 3.5 or a 5 kilowatt inverter so we can literally run everything through there. Also just to note there is a lot of our NMEA 2000 cabling that goes through here. We have got the GPS unit for the chart plotters there. So yeah there's so this is the whole guts of our system it all goes away you can hear a fan very gently whirring but again with all the panels put back in place that's completely quiet. Other things that we do have in switch unit, we do have a full C-Zone system on this boat and all the manual overrides, there's four manual override boxes that just have simple blade fuses to pull in and out should you need to do a manual override. Now I know we're outside, but yeah, this is still technically interior plant machinery. We have a Cataran, so we have two big engine bays. I wanna take you for a turn around here because it's very, very important that you see all the plant machinery that we have in here. They are almost identical, but yeah, let's just run through some bits in here. I'm gonna start with this, the big Yanmar 57 horsepower engine. Now, again, these are coupled to ST60 sail drives and gorry props. What we have found over the last two or three weeks of sailing that is that putting the gorries into overdrive is an insane amount of speed gain for minimal increased vibration. So we've got those. Seawind have mounted these stepping plates so we don't actually step directly onto the engine. And we've also got another stainless steel step here, which actually stops you from grabbing hold or touching the steering, with the, the pinion system, the tie rod system for the autopilot and the rudders. What I'm leaning against is a holding tank. It's a gravity fed holding tank. And again, all boats should have these nowadays. In here, this panel is an engine backup panel. So basically if there is ever a problem with the engine, or the uh, controls for the, the, the digital throttle controls, you can use this to override that. And there is a throttle control there as well as a start and a stop. And another pin that removes down there for just removing the boat, getting the boat from forward to reverse. Battery box in here. So we have the engine start battery. The engine here, just to notice, we have two alternators on this boat. We've got the standard alternator that Yanmar provide. But there's also this big, uh, master volt 200 amp alternator so between this alternator and the one on the other engine on the starboard engine we are getting up to 400 amps of power going in there very 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 solid very beautiful brackets stainless steel brackets and arms for the autopilot and the tie rod system tie rod system and then what we have here is we've got the emergency tiller this is the peg that goes into here. So basically there's a stand that it clips into there and then there's a carbon fiber steering rod. Filtration systems, one there, water strainer there, and a second filter there. We have bilge pumps there, float switches, a manual bilge pump, an automatic bilge pump, a bilge alarm, and this is all sealed. So this is a watertight bulkhead. The transom is watertight, so there's a watertight panel here. 
This is watertight and that is watertight. So in case of breach, we can completely isolate the breach. Very, very useful should we get, you know, lose a rudder or something like that. I have enough space to change filters, to work everywhere, to look pretty effectively, even from here at the level of any kind of like contaminant in the fuel filters and the, the, the bowls. Very, very good. So this is Ruby Rose 2. What do you think? Right, look, we are actually more and more in love with this boat every time we spend some time sailing her. So look, baptism of fire, absolutely. But now we're kind of growing into this. The amount of storage down below is phenomenal. The quality of the finish is phenomenal. It's actually a very, very comfortable living space. And it's also a safe living space with all these handholds, with the fiddles, with everything ergonomically designed for use at sea and at anchor. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. Anyway, I hope you like this. Like, this is our home. What do you think? Leave us a comment down below. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. And we will see you all next week when we are sailing again. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.